Hello, I am Arnav Malawati, and I am a fourth year computer engineering PhD student at UC Irvine. I'm presenting our paper titled SAGE, a split architecture methodology for efficient end-to-end -end autonomous vehicle control. My co-authors are Mohanad Odema, Sebastian Lajanes de Groot, and our PI is Professor Mohamed El Farouk. First, let's discuss the problem overview. Autonomous vehicles are expected to revolutionize transportation and road safety. However, driving safely is a challenging task. To meet this challenge, the computational complexity of AV software and the associated hardware requirements are increasing over time. The increased computational and thermal loads from the edge AV hardware on the vehicle can reduce range by over 11%. Researchers have proposed addressing this problem by building application-specific hardware to reduce energy consumption. However, ASIC design is rigid and prohibitively expensive. Another option is to implement vehicle to infrastructure communication to reduce the edge AV energy and sensing demands. But this also requires large investments and is not currently viable. In summary, current conventional edge AV hardware is lower cost to implement, but consumes more edge energy, while the proposed solutions require very high costs to reduce edge energy usage. Current approaches distill into two key computing paradigms, all edge computing and all cloud computing. Here we show a chart comparing the energy consumption and latency of running an AV end-to-end -end control model with all edge computing, all cloud computing, and our proposed methodology. The left chart shows the energy consumption of joules, and the right chart shows the latency in milliseconds for three different network data rates. The current industry standard is all edge computing, where models are run entirely on the edge AV hardware. But this requires powerful hardware platforms to be installed in the vehicle that consume kilowatts of power. In the figure, you can see that all edge computing can execute the driving algorithm and meet the latency deadline, but has consistently high energy consumption. Proposed in some recent works, all cloud computing involves offloading nearly all of the computation from the AV to the cloud. But current network infrastructure limitations mean that all cloud cannot meet the strict latency deadlines for AV control. As shown in the chart, all cloud has high energy usage and cannot meet the deadline at low data rates and needs higher data rates in order to save energy and meet the deadlines. To address these challenges, our goal is to design an offloading strategy that reduces AV energy consumption, is feasible at typical wireless network speeds, and does not require any hardware or infrastructure changes. So let's go over how a typical end-to-end -end AV control system works. First, sensor data such as camera images and speed readings is extracted from the vehicle. This sensor data is then passed into an end-to-end -end AV control model, which consists of a convolutional neural network to generate a set of image features and neural network layers to combine these features with other sensing data, as well as to model the relationship between the sensing data and control outputs. The active branch is selected based on the output of the navigation system of the vehicle, telling it to go straight, turn left or right, or to stop. Finally, the model outputs a set of control commands. In our case, this is steering, accelerator, and brake angle to drive the car. At this point, we ask a critical question. Instead of directly offloading from the sensor inputs, as was done with the all cloud approach, or running on the edge only, as is currently done in practice, can we accomplish these objectives more effectively by splitting the model architecture? In our work, we show that it's possible to split an AV control model into two pieces, a head and a tail, such that we have the option of running the tail either on the edge or on the cloud. By offloading in the middle of the model, we can reduce the size of the data that's sent to the cloud and make offloading more viable. To further reduce the latency and energy consumption of offloading, we introduce a bottleneck layer in the head model, which compresses the feature set significantly and reduces the head's output size. Then at runtime, we check the network conditions and decide whether to execute the tail model locally or to offload it to the cloud. In our paper, we demonstrate that our methodology can save more energy and is more feasible than the state-of-the-art methods. And this work is also the first to propose using split architecture computing for AVs. Now we have to answer the question, how is the bottleneck layer selected? We did a study and found that the existing layers in one of our models, DenseNet 169, cannot serve as practical offloading points. This chart shows some of the smaller layers in DenseNet organized by their depth in the model as well as our proposed bottleneck layer on the right. The left axis shows the output size of each layer in kilobytes, whereas the right side shows the latency in milliseconds of both processing the, on the edge until that layer and offloading from that layer. As shown, the earlier layers in the model have too large of an output size, 
increasing communication latency and energy consumption during offloading. Whereas the deeper layers in the model are too deep to reduce overall edge energy consumption by offloading, as most of the computation is already completed on the edge by the time these layers are reached. To address these issues, we inject a bottleneck layer early in the model that reduces the feature set significantly and presents an optimal offloading point for both latency and output size. To account for the performance impacts from the bottleneck layer, we use head network distillation to train the bottlenecked head model to mimic the behavior of the original head model. As shown below, the loss is computed directly between the output of the original head and the bottlenecked head for a given input to train it to mimic the outputs of the original head. After retraining, we attach the bottlenecked head back to the original tail model. This process results in a mean absolute error within 1% of the original model for all the model variations we tested. Since AV control is a safety critical application, our offloading algorithm must meet the latency deadline even when offloading fails. Thus, the system must be able to process at a rate of at least 10 frames per second to react quickly to changing traffic conditions. This gives us a 100 milliseconds deadline per control action. We implement a fail-safe mechanism where a timer invokes edge tail model execution if the offloading result from the cloud is not received by the deadline. We set this timer deadline early enough to allow time to run the tail model on the edge before the 100 millisecond deadline. Let's demonstrate this by discussing three possible scenarios. In the first scenario, the data rate is too low for offloading to be feasible, so the model runs in edge-only mode and finishes computation before the deadline. In the second scenario, the data rate is high enough to enable offloading, so the tail model is offloaded to the cloud, and the result is received back on the edge before the fail-safe deadline. In the third scenario, the data rate is initially high enough for offloading, but the edge fails to receive the result from the cloud by the fail-safe deadline. At this point, the tail is invoked on the edge model and finishes execution before the 100 millisecond deadline. Now let's discuss our experimental setup. For our experiments, we converted well-known perception models into deep imitation learning models for AV control. We evaluated the energy consumption and model latency on both the NVIDIA Jetson TX2 and the NVIDIA Drive PX2. A Windows PC was also used as our cloud server. We compiled the models for hardware using CAFE and TensorRT, and all models were trained and evaluated on the Carla Conditional Imitation Learning Dataset. Here we present our communication model. First, let's define some variables. The T variables represent latency, while the P variables represent power consumption. T up and T down represent the upload and download latency, while T round trip time represents the routing delays. We use power models derived from real world 4G, LTE, 3G, and Wi Fi data in our calculations. The upload and download latency are then given as the data size divided by the effective data rate. The communication latency is defined as the sum of the upload, download, and routing latencies. And the communication energy consumption is calculated as the upload power times the upload latency plus the download power times the download latency. Here's a chart showing for a single model, the energy consumption in joules of each network technology at three different data rates. As shown, 4G LTE, shown in yellow, consumes the most energy at low data rates, but at higher data rates, 4G LTE and Wi-Fi have similar energy consumption. It should also be noted that 3G is restricted to low speeds due to its technological limitations. First, we show results on the original Carla imitation learning dataset size, which is 88 by 200 resolution images. The chart on the left shows the energy consumption on the edge in joules, while the chart on the right shows the end-to-end -end latency for edge-only computation, as well as for two different data rates in milliseconds. We find that it's feasible to offload both the DenseNet and the ResNet models at practical speeds for all network technologies. This is shown in the chart where we see that all models meet the deadline and consume less energy than edge-only computation. The Carlinet model is smaller, on the other hand, and has a larger bottleneck size, so the energy and latency of offloading the Carlinet model exceeds that of local computation, as is shown in the charts in gray. Overall, we find that the models can meet the deadline when offloading, and the TX2 and PX2 save 50% and 22% energy when offloading compared to edge-only computation. In our next experiment with one 720p camera's input, we found that the DenseNet and ResNet models can again meet the latency deadline and save energy at typical 4G LTE and Wi-Fi speeds. As shown in the left chart, all three models save a significant amount of energy when offloading, 
And on the right, we see that a data rate of 24 megabits per second is needed to meet the deadline, which is a typical speed for 4G LTE. Phage was again less effective on the smaller Carlinet model in this experiment as it required more energy to offload than execute locally. Overall, we found that Sage reduced energy consumption by 47% compared to edge-only computation. As a more realistic use case, we evaluated Sage with three 720p camera inputs. We used both 16-bit and 8-bit quantization at the bottleneck, which reduced transmission data size by over 96% without affecting model performance. We found that it's again feasible to offload the dense net and ResNet models at typical 4G LTE data rates, and that offloading reduced energy usage by 56% compared to edge-only computation. Interestingly, we also found that 8-bit quantization reduced the upload data rate requirement by 50% and reduced the overall energy consumption as well. In conclusion, we present SAGE, a novel split architecture methodology for AV control. We showed in our paper that SAGE does not require any hardware or infrastructure changes, making it more cost efficient, has lower throughput requirements than direct offloading, making it more practical, and is platform and network technology agnostic, making it more flexible. It can even be applied to 5G and wave communication when these power models become available. We'd also like to reiterate that this is the first work to propose using a split architecture computing methodology for AV applications. Thank you.